My name is Don Green. I'm CEO of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. I'm in our offices located on the beautiful campus of University of Virginia Wise. Let's talk just a few minutes about Napoleon Hill Day. We know this virus has uh, affected lots of things and, uh, and we're one of them. We have had Napoleon Hill Day for 20 some years, honoring the great Napoleon Hill for all the work he did. Um, he was born in October in 1883. And we set aside the last Monday in the month uh, to honor his uh, birthday. And this year, of course, uh, we had to cancel it. So we want to talk a little bit about uh, Napoleon Hill. Uh, he spent a lifetime studying, studying a simple question. Why are some people successful and most other people are not? And by studying people, 500 of them, he, he mentions over <laughs> of successful people. But he also said he did interviews with over 10,000 unsuccessful people. A lot of them were done by uh, mail, by questioners, what have you. <clears throat> he said often he learned more from people that were unsuccessful than he did from one successful. In other words, he taught, taught us how to be successful. And also we learned lessons from people. Don't do what these people did. And uh, so we learn both ways. We learn what to do. We also learn what not to do. And what I think is um, um, wonderful that his material is so popular. I mean, I don't care for if it's in, uh, sometimes I have to look up. I got one this morning, some little old country over there wanting to license one of our books. I mean, they know where he is all over the world. We have way over 500 foreign publishers. For example, it's close 30 in, uh, in Russia alone that have published our books. Our published, books are published all over the Middle East. Uh, uh, we've probably done 30, 40 books in, with one publisher in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. But it uh, doesn't matter where the country is. Uh, is uh, Sri Lanka or Indonesia or where it is, uh, they know who Napoleon Hill is. And uh, even though he's been dead now, he's been dead, this will be, uh, 50, 50 years, he, he died in November of uh, 1970 at the age of 87. So uh, we want to continue his le legacy. We want as many people uh, to learn the material. And I try to tell people that if they learn the material, it would help them, definitely would help them. And it's that old saying, the best investment you'll ever make in your life is the investment you make in yourself. But if you take the material and study it, you can teach it to other people, which means it's even worth a lot more. And you can even get to the point where you can teach people how to teach other people the material and, and your influence is greatly ex expanded. Of course, we know it starts with us and it starts with our family and those that are that are closest to us. Uh, we uh, wish we had Napoleon Hill Day, but some things is different because of the virus. Uh, because I know, we know people love to come here. We have noted uh, speakers every year that come voluntarily and speak to the, to the uh, students. And of course, we know the epidemic has prevented from gatherings. And so we put it together a little bit that maybe you could watch and be reminded of the importance that Napoleon Hill has played in all of our lives. But uh, thank you very much. and. Um, we are going to show you some footage from uh, four of our instructors, Napoleon Hill instructors. We have many, many of them. We have four that uh, volunteered to talk a little bit about the course. And the first one is uh, ever smiling, happy Johnny Lloyd. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll give you some her take on uh, Napoleon Hill and then uh, John R Renola, who has a wonderful, wonderful story. And then we have uh, Miss Personality, Adora Evans. And then the faithful Lefford Fate, uh, who's a tremendous uh, communicator of what we're all, all trying to do. And from these four people that's went through our program and are certified Napoleon Hill instructors, I think you will learn from them. We have many, many more. These four 
up in Bollinger right quick. And so you will be able to um, watch and listen to each of those four uh, as part of this program. But thank you very much. And I hope you all benefit from the time you spend with us. Hi, this is Johnny. And I'm with Johnny Lloyd and Associates. And I'm a speaker, author, consultant for businesses, nonprofits, and specialized in churches. I have over 47 years of accounting experience and I've had an amazing career. Now, my life didn't actually start like that. And there has been segments in my life that didn't look like the where I'm at today. So as we celebrate Napoleon Hill founders, our Founders Day, I would like to encourage each of us to take the principles and apply them even more so to our life. Because the principles are part of the gap that will fill in any crack or crevice to get us to the place that we were designed to be at as it relates to our success, as it relates to living a legacy that leaves a legacy that cannot be erased. And when I say that, I'm really talking about Napoleon Hill too, because he did live a legacy that left a legacy that cannot be erased people are still using his principles today. So how did I come upon Napoleon Hill? <laughs> I came upon Napoleon Hill when um, my parents were a part of uh, a sales force uh, that taught his principles. Um, what ended up happening with them is that it actually transformed their mindset to a place that they believed and did accomplish great things for their family, but they took their control to do it and was not just depending on a nine to five job. It moved us from what most people would have said was, um, I'm, I'm gonna call it the inner city, or some people may have called it the ghetto, and uh, out to, to uh, a, a very nice home, living a very nice life. Uh, but they learned it and they gave us little bites of it. We saw the changes in them and we didn't necessarily understand that. So they would teach us and let us come to the events and let us see the energy that the people had and all of that. And that's how I was introduced to it. Then I kind of you know, got married, walked away kept on moving forward. That was great for them kind of thing. And I ran into like a brick wall, <laughs> Napoleon Hill principles for myself when I became homeless. I lived about 2,200 miles from my parents and my life, uh, some things happened that devastated my life, every aspect of my life. It was actually the best of times because I just had my first and only child. And it was the worst of times because of the devastation. Uh, almost dying, dealing with almost all six ghosts of fear right there at that moment. And I didn't even realize because I hadn't studied the principles that deep. But what I did know is while laying on orange shag carpet with my daughter on my chest, I knew I was better than that. I knew that there was greater ahead for me. And I got up and I went back and got the books. I went back and listened to the tapes. I went back and started talking to my parents about the concepts that they had learned. And I ended up opening up um, the business that they had and became very well uh, successful at it. And then I ended up opening up a couple other companies. And all of them were successful. 
at the level that I needed at the time. So then I traveled the world. And as I traveled the world, I was using the principles at my job. I was using the principles in helping other people without telling them it was the principle, but uh, teaching the principles sort of indirectly. And, um, and it just really impacted every area of my life. So then I look at how has me being a part of the foundation, uh, me being part of the Ma Napoleon Hill Certified Instructors, how has that impacted my life? Well, I came to a point in my life where I was, I'll call it frustrated, but if anybody had been looking at my life, they would have said, why? Living large, had a great life, had a great job, making really great money, had the easiest job in the world, all of that. However, I had become so good at everything that I really was crying out for what is the thing I was created to do? What is the burning desire in me? And it, it was like a flame that I knew existed, but I, I couldn't see it. I hadn't taken the time or uh, used my mind in such a way to connect to it. And that's what I went to the, through the classes. And through that, I built a definite major purpose that, cause, that causes me to move forward in such a way that is so strategic. Um, and it's so intentional that it causes me to have a greater momentum. And isn't that the principle? Don't you see the principles in that? It's so amazing. So I've met amazing people worldwide. I have spoke on platforms that were not just stateside, but international. And it has caused me to grow in a place that I never thought was possible but it was always in me. And that's what a founding father does. Founding fathers like Napoleon Hill and the principles that work are the things that happen regardless to us realizing it on the surface, but our subconscious mind is in the background working it out for our good. And so I connected with the foundation, connected with Don and Uriel and the whole team and all the people that were in our class. And it was just amazing. And now since then, of course, giving back and connecting with other classes because I know personally the impact it's had on my life. And now even during this season, my burning desire is the flame is even greater. My, des my faith uh, is moving forward in a, in a deeper way. I thought I was using the principles to their maximum potential. And then we came to this situation of this major crisis. And I had to dig deeper. And when I dug deeper, I found out that I that the principles that I were still using the principle, but there was greater value because of the adversity that I was dealing with, because of the perceived defeat. I had to open up things and look at the opportunity in the middle of them. Had it not been for the principle, I would not have understood that. And I would not have been able to share that to the different platforms, to the different people that are in my life and even put it out in, in the different formats that I've put it out in. See, from the principle, and just like with Napoleon Hill, it's not about one person, it's about humanity. What he has provided to us impacts humanity. Every decision we make matters we know have gold in our hands and we have the opportunity to share it with so many other people. 
So I have like, like I said, met like-minded people. It has impacted my life in such an amazing way. And even during this season, what has happened for me is I have turned around and I've opened up a nonprofit called Raise Up Nation, which is about social economic uh, development that does financial literacy. And then I've opened up a company. You said, wow, in the middle of a pandemic? Yeah, <laughs> that's what the principles do. They cause you to look at what's in your hand and say, how can I serve? How can what I have impact others? How can I be the answer to a problem? Because we're problem solvers. And that's what the principles have done. Now, I'm not saying this to impress you. However, I am saying that to impress upon you the impact of utilizing the principles every day in your life. To take the principles and smear them, fill every crack and crevice of your life. Now, my basis for that is I'm a faith. I'm a, I believe in God. And in addition to that, I know how the principles connect to my faith. They align to my belief system. They cause it to link together and build stronger. So I would encourage you during this season to not just remember the founder, but to dig deeper into the principles so that everybody in your life, including you, will be greater on the other side. So thank you for your time. This is Johnny. My journey started in 2013. I found that my life had spiraled out of control. I found that I hit rock bottom. I had my dad's definition of success. I had the union job, the pension, the retirement plan. I had the house, new cars. But the one thing I found, I did not have myself. I lost my purpose. And I just let my life spiral out of control. I was drinking at night. There were some nights I would have three quarters of a bottle of cognac. I was overeating, so I couldn't even hold in my stomach anymore. I was sitting in three to six hours a day in New York City traffic, driving into the city in a beat up work van. And I just felt like my life was lost. I don't know where it went. I always thought I was supposed to be something more, something greater. And somehow I let my life totally spiral out of control. My name is John Neola. I am a certified uh, PMA, Napoleon Hill Science of Success leader and instructor. Napoleon Hill had been in my life for years, even though I did not open, it, open the book or even start with it for years to come. It was given, the book Think and Grow Rich was given to me, probably in my early 20s, by my sister, telling me that this might be interesting, that I should read it. I might have started reading it, I don't know, I wasn't really a reader. And I put that book away, it sat in my closet, it moved from home to home, and it just sat in my closet for years. One day, I was sitting on the Long Island Expressway driving to the city, and I really had to find a way to get myself out of the rut that I got myself into. I needed something more, I needed something, but I didn't know where to turn to. I had no one to turn to. Everyone I knew had a negative lifestyle, negative thought patterns. Even growing up, I was told successful people uh, cannot become uh, people cannot become successful anymore, or you can't do this, or you can't do that. I even had teachers tell me I was not smart enough to own my own business, that I should become a garbage man and pick up garbage. 
My life wasn't easy. I had it great. I had love. I had a family. I did get picked on in school. I actually thought, being I wore these big glasses, that being stupid was better than being called a nerd. So I never even tried in school. I never even attempted to pass the test or study. I just did not want to be called a nerd or be known as a smart kid with big glasses and all of that. But one day, I sat, on, I sat in the traffic and I had to find my way out of the life that I built for myself. Yes, I had to leave. I was successful in that vision. So, this was the beginning of internet on the phones. I had a flip phone and I started to listen to motivational videos. And it got very boring because I had a lot of time sitting in traffic and I was able to listen on a job site. Then I remembered a couple of years back, I picked up this CD package called They Can Grow Rich, the Gold Edition. I pulled this out a couple of years ago and started listening to the first CD. I thought I was a fool. I thought I wasted my money and I, I said to myself that only authors become rich. And I was a sucker buying this book and I threw it in the drawer. So I finally went to, back to this drawer and pulled out the CDs and I recorded them on an MP3 player. And for the next two, three days, I listened to these all day at work. On the job site, on the, in the mechanic room. And it brought peace to me. This book blew my mind away. It started to make me question things, question my life. It gave me energy. It made me come alive. But I was still searching. I still wanted more books, so I picked up a Kindle so the Kindle could read to me because I can only get so many audio books or find so many videos that the books could read to me. So I started to listen to whatever books I had or I can find on financing, business, success, everything. And I lost my way from Napoleon Hill. I started to study in other teachers, other philosophers, other people. I spent years chasing a secret to success, holding myself back from understanding that I was the true definition of success. One day, in my searches, I came across the Napoleon Hill marker in Virginia. And a foolish vision I had was to take a picture there so I could show it off at my friends on Facebook and other social media. I thought I was cool because I was studying self-development and I knew who Napoleon Hill was and things like that. So I sat in my room and I just visioned myself at the sign, taking a picture at it. Now my friends looked in Virginia, so I figured I would just be able to go there, take a picture, put this on Facebook or the social media. And it would be one, two, three, done. I realized after I asked my friends where why Virginia was, that it was over six hours from their house. So that vision swept my mind. I never ever even thought about that again. So time went on, I studied a lot of uh, philosophies, I studied a lot of teachers out there. I even finished and wrote my own book. And then one night I just sat there, and I probably had a couple of drinks with me, and I just know that something was missing. I felt a, a drive in me, a calling to find out more information, but I did not know where to look. So I googled something on, on the internet, and for some reason I came across the Napoleon Hill Foundation. 
and why I did not become come across it before, I don't know why, maybe I have, maybe I didn't, but I came across of to become certified. And something inside of me told me, you have to get certified, you're going to do this. I'm like, okay, I mean, I don't like to read, I don't like to study, um, okay, let's do this. Let me find out what it's about. And I figured it would probably be something that would drag me in and then be an expensive course. So the next morning, I was excited. I was able to make a phone call during the day on my job. And I called the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And Don Green answered the call. Now, this was the first time I ever was able to talk mind to mind to someone. Don Green actually listened to me about my story, my book, and then we talked about Napoleon Hill and how action was the most important thing to success. And that was something I found out in my journey. So that moment after I talked to him, I hung up the phone. I knew I had to go get certified, no matter what, no matter what it took. So that night I went home and I signed up for the PMA Science of Success. And that was, that's the beginning of my journey. And it was not easy for me. Many people could read and understand what they read. I had to read it over and over and over again just to understand what I was reading. I took many, many notes, many different notes. I tried so many different things to imprint this information in my mind. So I finally got everything done online and passed everything. And then the next step was to go into Virginia to take the course in person. That was very scary for I did not know where I was going. Remember, I didn't know anyone positive. I didn't know anyone really on a successful, very successful level. And I really went to the foundation and they made me feel so comfortable that it was almost like I had a family. And I say, I went in there looking for knowledge and I came home with a family. So one day, as a class, we all went to the marker in Virginia. And I took a picture in front of that marker and I realized that I was there already. I took this picture. I visioned it. I was in that grass. My vision came true. But that simple, foolish vision drove me to the Napoleon Hill Foundation. Drove me to get certified, which I did not want to get certified. I wasn't a thought in my mind. I just needed more knowledge. I needed to know more. So that simple vision got me not only to the Napoleon Hill Foundation once, but twice. It also got me to Think and Grow Rich Sweden and Think and Grow Rich Caribbean. These were opportunities I never thought of, I never visioned it. My vision that I had was a foolish vision, but it grew into something way beyond what I ever imagined. And when I got out of the Napoleon Hill Foundation, I found what I was looking for. And it was in an assignment. And that was self-discipline. And studying and studying and studying self-discipline and working on my speeches for my final exam taught me a lot about self-discipline. And it taught me that's what I was lacking in my success. See, we all vision something, but we don't know where our vision is going to take us. So, me with the future of Napoleon Hill's work and teaching PMA is only the beginning. I cannot even imagine 
or vision what is going to come out of this philosophy for my life and for the people around me. I don't know, I came to vision it. That's how much faith I have in infinite intelligence and this philosophy. Because I know where I am being guided. I am being guided to a purpose, a meaningful purpose, that I never even dreamt about. And that's what I found at the Napoleon Hill Foundation. And believe me, I had many options to go elsewhere. And when I found, what I found at the Napoleon Hill Foundation, I am so glad that I got turned off by other self-development gurus, teachers, and books. For one kind gesture, one kind conversation from Don Green was also the reason why I am here today. Because I reached out to other people and they really kind of insulted me or they kind of sent emails back without even, I don't even think they read my emails. So for the Napoleon Hill Foundation to have the heart of Napoleon Hill is remarkable. And that's why I want to work with Napoleon Hill's work. And Napoleon Hill's work will be a part of my life for the rest of my life. Because people like the Napoleon Hill Foundation do it because they care. And they understand the power that is out there. They understand the true hidden secrets of success. And they understand it has to come from within, from within the student. And from right now, I believe the Napoleon Hill Foundation is one of the best teachers out there for that reason. So my name is John Yola, and I want to thank you for the opportunities that I had and the opportunities that you are giving to everyone else that is in Napoleon Hills or that is living out Napoleon Hill's dreams because we are part of Napoleon Hill. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Adora, uh, author of the best-selling book, Majestic Money, The 30-Day Fem Manifesting Game. I am so excited to be celebrating Napoleon Hill because he and his work and the people at the foundation have been a monumental, important part of my own personal journey and life. You know, when I found Think and Grow Rich, it it was during a really dark time. I had been hearing about him for a while because lots of my favorite authors at the time, they used to, authors used to put a suggested reading list in the back of their books and almost every book that I read had Think and Grow Rich in there somewhere. And so it took a few years before I actually read the book, but when I read it, I had just been drugged and raped. Uh, I was working in a job that I was not proud of, dancing uh, in a gentleman's club. And, um, and I was just in a really devastated place, but optimistic. And where I still go when I'm looking to grow, to elevate, to heal, to transcend some ideas, one of the places is great books by great authors and teachers. And at that time I felt drawn to, now's the time, Think and Grow Rich. So there I am, I'm sitting in this uh, apartment and I remember this sheer blue curtain kind of breezing and my knees tucked up and I'm reading Think and Grow Rich and I'm feeling in my heart this opening of possibility, like something changes possible, you know, for me. And I kind of felt like Napoleon Hill was talking right to me, honestly. And um, so I wrote down in a book similar to this, you know, chapter one's deafness of purpose. And so I wrote down all of these things and I have crazy enthusiasm even now. So imagine at 23, I'm reading out loud all the things that I wanted to accomplish. And I was naive enough to just go for it. You know how they say just 
if you could do anything and failure wasn't an option, what would you do? Well, I wrote down, if I could do anything, I would love to interview successful people for a living like Napoleon Hill did, but to be paid for it. You guys, nobody knew that I had this written down except for maybe my neighbors, bless their souls. <laughs> but um, nobody knew because I was screaming, I was so loud. Nobody knew. And a guy friend of mine called and he said, look, um, there's a job that I had in my early 20s. It gave me the skill set that I have now. They're hiring. I think you should apply. He said, you'll have to go through all these psychology tests, and but I can get you at least the interview. And you know, I watched this guy go from an apartment to million dollar company, and I was desperate. I was ready for change. So I just did it. I put on boxy clothes, tried to look older. I had braces at the time. Had to go through all these psychology tests, and I got the job. And I know I just got pumped up, and you don't know why. Here's why. Because my job, was as a producer. I became a producer on the Discovery Channel. My name ran in the credits. My job was to call CEOs of 10 million plus companies and to talk with them about being featured on this show that aired on the Discovery Channel. And the process of doing this was an interview process. So all day, every day I was interviewing these amazing, especially at 23, right? These amazing, dynamic minds of you know even fortune 500 company owners it was it was so incredible and i wasn't even done with the book yet and lots of other things came like that you know i wrote down i wanted to uh, be a writer i wanted to live in egypt i wanted to work with celebrities and impactful things and i did all of those i lived in la i worked on red carpets um I got to go live in Egypt. I wrote for a fashion and art magazine. I got to do a small part in helping to create the movie, The Secret, worked with Dennis Waitley. And now, you know, I'm in this uh, self-development industry myself, which was always my dream, helping other people. And so um, that just absolutely set me on an entirely different course. And Think and Grow Rich and just any of the work by Napoleon Hill, I still use this work in my life today. So I showed you, you know, my gold book used to look like that. Now I still, you know, mine's longer probably than most people. I still you record, I write down every three months or so exactly who I wanna be, what I'm creating next, the affirmations I wanna live, what my purpose is, and then I record it. I listen to that every single day whenever I'm working out. Um, also, infinite intelligence and working with that divine counsel and all of the principles in there. I mean, all of them are relevant, pleasing personality, you know, sex transmutation and using that energy. As I'm someone who works with divine feminine and the energy, a feminine energy to manifest. Like Napoleon Hill is talking about these things in his way. So, um, if you're thinking of reading anything by Napoleon Hill, do it and, and get the paperback versions and the audio versions because, you know, years have gone by, but every time I read or participate with this material, something new opens for me, a new aha, a deeper understanding. That's the way this stuff works, right? And if you're called and, and feeling like, Napoleon Hill or you like his books or anything that's because you're up to the things that he was up to and that's transformation It's contribution. It's evolution. It's highest and greatest good for all so because of that. I love you I heard someone say But wait, you don't know me. I, I saw a little sticker about this like but how can you say you love me? You don't know me there are enough people spreading hate for no reason, right? So I love you and I can spread love right now and I hope that you'll just take that into your heart. I hope to see you at a live event when we're back live or online, uh, but thank you. Hello, my name is Leffert Faith and I am a Napoleon Hill certified leader who works in the city of Sumter, South Carolina as the support services director. And I wanna talk a little bit about adversity and defeat and what I've learned by studying Napoleon Hill's principles. I don't know if you've ever read the book The Tale of Two Cities.
But in 1986, that was my best of times and the worst of times. It was the best of times because on March 18th, 1986, my son Calvin was born. And uh, Calvin was the apple of my eye. It would be my, my first son. And I was extremely, extremely excited about that. It was the worst of times because on March 4th, 1986, that same year, my favorite lady in the world, she died. And, and that was my mother. Um, I had an opportunity to go see my mom before my son was born, but I decided not to do it because I wanted to just be able to go and visit and have my son with me because my mom was my favorite person and she loved me to death. Uh, I used to always think that I was her favorite child and I, I, don't, I don't miss a chance to tell my siblings that, right? And uh, so she wanted to see me and I wanted to see her, but I wanted to have Calvin with me. And um, two weeks before he was born, she, she died and, and I very nearly lost myself. I don't know if you've ever had a bad thing that goes on in your life, a negative thing, but that was really, really hard for me. And to be honest, it was, it was so tough because there were people in my life that were trying to help me. I had friends who loved me and they were trying to encourage me, say, hey, you know, keep your head up. You got a new son. There's no need for you to be sad. There's no need for you to be upset. They were saying things like, you know, God calls his own to him, and, you know, it was a gift, and, and I knew they were trying to help me, but it, it wasn't helping. I was, I was hurting. But then I'd have other friends that tried to help me on the other side who would say things like, Lefford, I mean, are you okay because you're acting like you're happy because you got your son, but I thought your mom was your favorite person. What's going on? So... People were telling me that I should be happy and people were telling me that I should be sad and, and I was very, very nearly lost because I didn't know how to respond. And I found myself in a spiral of doing negative and not smart things. Where I was trying to be positive, it just wouldn't work out. Where I was, and it just wouldn't work out for me. And I, find my, I found myself getting into trouble, a lot of trouble. I was in the Air Force, I was a, a young staff sergeant, I hadn't been in the Air Force for four years, and I found myself doing things that didn't make sense. I would, I would have money and then I would lose money, or I wouldn't pay bills with it. There was just so many things that were going on. I would walk around with this angry look on my face, a very negative self-image and a very negative mental attitude, and with that negative mental attitude, I was drawing negativity towards me. And again, I found myself in a situation where I found myself in my non-commissioned officer in charge's office. A guy by the name of Tech Sergeant John Gunther, he called me into his office and he said, Fate, you're messing up. And he had a McDonald's application in his hand. And he said, either you can get yourself together and be a good airman, or you can take this application because we're going to kick you out of the Air Force. You know, it was a wake-up call and it was a tough call, but I think Sergeant Gunther saved my life. Because I don't know if you've ever seen this situation, but people are going down a path and they're going down, 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 and sometimes people will just back away and watch you crash and burn. And Sergeant Gunther wasn't going to do that. And let me be honest with you, he was not nice about it. He didn't bring me in and put his arm around my shoulder and whisper sweet nothings into my head. He did not do that. He put it on the table to me saying that if I continue on the road that I'm going, I'm going to be out of the Air Force and I'm going to end up wasting talent. And so it was a wake-up call for me. And I started to watch Sergeant Gunther after that event. And one of the things that I noticed about Sergeant Gunther is that on his desk, he would always have a copy of the Bible and the book, Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Always. 
when you would see him out in the field, I worked in the nuclear missile field, and he would come out and visit us. And on the seat of his truck, he would have the Bible, and he would have Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. And when we would have exercises where basically is, is Air Force training, and everybody else would be around doing silly things, and he would be in a corner, and he'd be reading a book. It would be the Bible, or it would be Think and Grow Rich. And I noticed something about Sergeant Gunther. I noticed that people liked him, and he loved other people. He was always professional. He looked sharp in uniform. He always had a smile on his face, even for somebody like me. And I started to think, what is it that he has that I don't have? What is it that if I learn from him, I can be better? So I started watching Sergeant Gunther and I started reading the books. I, I knew the Bible. I grew up in the church. I knew the Bible, but I didn't know. Have you ever known something but didn't know? That was, that was kind of me. And I started reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And I got to be honest, when I first started reading it, I didn't get it. But I kept reading it because I was watching him and I read it and I read it and I read it. And I came across this whole thing about adversity and defeat, that for every adversity, there's a seed of an equivalent benefit. And I started meditating on that seed of an equivalent benefit and, and how that the seed was something that wasn't a full grown plant, but a seed was just something that I can work on. And I gotta be honest, I was lost, but I, I grabbed onto that whole thing about a seed. And as I read the book and I started watching Sergeant Gump and I started watching other people, and I started thinking about this seed of an equivalent benefit. And, and, and guys, I gotta be honest with you, I'm sitting here thinking about my mom and, and I'm trying to figure out what benefit could I get out of losing my mother. But then I started thinking about my son and, and my wife and I was thinking, well, what is the benefit that I can get out of my wife and my son? I had a great military career. I was a young guy and I had opportunities that I didn't have back home. So I started looking, what is the seed of, of an equivalent benefit out, out of this whole thing? And I, and I don't know how and I don't know why, but I know it came to me. And it was like, what would your mother do? Now my mom, She's an amazing woman. To me, she was, a, she was a saint. She was my favorite person. And I know one thing. I knew that she loved me. I knew she loved me, and she was just a loving person. So I started thinking, what would my mom do? And I knew that my mom would love me. I knew that she would love my son as much as she loved me. She would probably love him more than me because, you know, he was a little cutie, and it was her baby's baby. And so what I did was, I took all of that love that my mom poured into me my whole life. And I said, okay, and I would take all of that love that my mom would pour into my son, right? And I tried to take all of that love and I tried to focus on my son and give him all of the love that my mom wouldn't be able to give him. And one of the things that I learned, a seed that I pulled from that whole thing is, is that when you're focusing on the thing that you want, when you're focusing on that love bit, it's very difficult, I think it's impossible, to hold love and hate, joy and pain in that same spot for long. So I started focusing on that thing. And I started focusing and I started focusing and I started focusing. And the love that I had for my son and the love that I had for my mother was the thing that pulled me through. Now, it's, it's really easy to say that because time doesn't, time does not help me get over anything, but it's helped me get through. And the love that I shared from my mother, and I knew she shared from me, and the love that she would share from my son, I knew that that would help me. And so over time, it's better and better and better. And now my son Calvin has a daughter, a little girl by the name of Eden, who I love dearly. And 
I recognize that that seed of an equivalent benefit, that I got something from it. I got a deep love for my son. And, and you know, what did I learn from all that? Because that's family and that's love and I got it and, I, and I'm so happy that I had that part of my life. But what it has taught me is that sometimes things are gonna go on in your life. You're gonna lose somebody, you're gonna lose something, you're gonna lose a job. But if you look for that thing in there to turn it around, to help you get through it, if you do that, life can be better for you. Now I'm not gonna lie, on my mom's birthday and, and on holidays and, and on Mother's Day, you know, I shed a tear and, I, and I'm sad. And because uh, I love her to life, I, I continuously love her. But there is a seed, and I'm a better man, um, a better father, and now I think I'm a better grandfather for turning that thing around. So next time something comes up, up in your life, because it will, let's be honest, things will happen. Look for that seed, and if not for Sergeant Gunther, if not for the Bible, and if not for thinking grow rich from Napoleon Hill, I would have never seen that. And from every situation since that time, every time something happens, every time a little rain falls, I'm looking for that seed. And again, the cool thing about a seed is if you put in the work, if you add the sunshine, if you add the rain, if you take care of it, then on the other side, you will have a full blown dream, a full blown blessing a full-blown opportunity. So as you go through life, um, just think about that. For every adversity, there's a seed of an equivalent benefit. We just got to look for that seed and we got to do something with it. Thank you very much. Again, this is Leffert Faith, a member of the Napoleon Hill Leader Certification crew, and uh, be blessed. I hope all of you listeners and watchers have enjoyed the presentation uh, that we uh, use for Napoleon Hill Day to keep you abreast of kind of what's going on. And personally, I want to thank those that took part in it. Of course, starting off with Lana and her students uh, from Tuscan College came over and did some uh, did some filming of uh, Napoleon Hill history background. And I'd like to thank uh, uh, Adora Evans, Lefford Fade, John Renola, and of course, Johnny, Johnny Lloyd for their participation and, and hope you enjoyed the little bit of time that you uh, spent with us and that you stay in touch and that you affect other people's lives in the same way that you've been affected by this positive material. And thank you very much for your support.